be reading verse 10 from Vilapko Sumanjali. O Goddess, I am a maidservant of your lotus-like feet, whose vine-like body burns in the forest fire of separation from you. Please revive me at once with your nectarian glances. So repeat the verse. O Goddess, I am a maidservant of your lotus-like feet, whose vine-like body burns in the forest fire of separation from you. Please revive me at once with your nectarian glances. Purport explanations. Sri Raghunath in his Svarupavesh is weeping out of separation from Shirada. These feelings of separation are as painful as the high rising flames of a forest fire. Yes. Strongly desiring to see his Praneshwari. He falls on the bank of Radakund and anxiously laments. He, she is unable to go on carrying the burden of his, her vine-like body. That is burning in the fire of separation from Ishwari and cries in an abode of misery like a desolate orphan. Those who have surrendered to Shirarika's lotus feet cannot find consolation in anything of this world anymore. Their minds and their lives are floating like wooden instruments on the stream of Shirada's sweetness that inundates the whole world. In his Vraj Vilas Stava, Srila Raghunathas Goswami writes, My heart becomes very agitated by remembering even a drop from the divine ocean of their nectarian rasa. The great teachers of devotion say, What is natural for the perfected souls is the target of the practicing devotees. So the great teachers of devotion say, what is natural for the perfected souls is the target of the practicing devotees.
the example given by the great devotional teachers of yore is the compass for the practicing Rasika devotees of Rindavan. When this example is to be invigorated, one must awaken one's Swarupa Vesh. It is the natural, sorry, it is the nature of bodily consciousness that the mind and the intelligence remain attached to dull, perishable matter. But the beauty of Svarupavesh has no connection or relation with anything of this material world. Why would such a person like anything in the material world? Raghunath was a wealthy, was as wealthy as Lord Indra and his wife. Was a beautiful, was beautiful as an angel. But he gave it all up and fully surrendered to the lotus feet of Sriman Mahaprabhu. I'm acquainted with so many people of this world, but I am not at all acquainted with my beloved deity. In his Mana Shiksha, Sri Raghunath says, Although I managed to give up lust and anger and so on, the shameless dog-eating person of the desire for distinction is still dancing in my heart. Okay. Hi, Radhe. I would like to share on this because I have also, I mean, when Raghunath Daska Swami is saying this, it comes from a very uh, pure level of bhakti. But uh, now when I was lying sick so many weeks and almost I felt like there's nothing left in my mind that, uh, how do you say, that is uh, full of bhakti anymore. <laughs> and then I uh, re um, remembered, Gurudev, you were telling us that uh, to observe the dreams and uh, the dreams they really reveal the ego for myself i was mostly uh, dreaming some nonsense in which the mind was constantly thinking how uh, do i look how do others feel about me so i i think that is uh, that what raghunath das goswami is saying uh, yeah, I managed to give up many things, uh, but this desire for distinction, that is a very deep-rooted, uh, unwanted guest, so to say. And when I look at myself from this perspective, I can only pray that Srimati Radhika and her Dasis will help me to remember and to see and feel things from the perspective of a spiritual being because this human existence it is so deeply rooted in my consciousness and still this uh, shameless uh, how do you say ego and desire for how do others feel about me what do others think about me this is so um prominent and i was so shocked because especially when the body and the mind becoming weak, then it's for myself, it was a very uh, depressing um, realization that uh, how, where is Srimati Radhika? Where is my desire to be in her, um, 
uh, uh, you know, shadow and all these things they removed so far away. And I'm I'm not saying this to to depress anybody, but this is just a like critical self reflection. And I think that Raghunadas Goswami. He is giving us so much hope. He is inviting us and showing his deepest, deepest feelings in his uh, Svarupa Vesh, it says. But at the same time, he, he is so critical also with himself that this, uh, you know, okay, why is there still this desire for distinction dancing in my heart? And I can relate to this. Really, I feel also very depressed about uh, my consciousness, especially when I think about the time of death. What will be? No, what will be? Now I just had a very uh, serious or heavy uh, uh, virus infection two times after another. Okay, you know, that is also something very heavy to have. But I was thinking, you know, I was all the time thinking, wow, no, now you are already so weak. The mind becomes weak when the body becomes weak. And, and what will be, you know, when I have to leave the body? So I realized for myself, there's still so much to learn. And I'm, you know, usually I'm an enthusiastic person. But sometimes when I look at my, um, how do you say, condition then i can also become quite uh sad and uh, quite sober <laughs> and i just know that i have to become honest i have to become very uh sober and and the greed and the eagerness you know it has to develop again after so many weeks of somehow some tama some ignorance no? I just want to share this. Maybe it is not so super positive, but I try to be honest. <laughs> Radhe. Radhe, Radhe, Suniti. Thank you so hey, much Darum Baba. <laughs> for your courage to share this because I know uh, what you are talking about because every one of us goes, goes through these moments of bodily and mental weakness. So therefore, it is even more important that we talk about what we talked about last week when Sudevi was reading. The only chance we have, we are doing now. We are hearing in Sadhu Sangha. So I found this sentence Chakshu was reading so very important. What is natural for the perfected souls is the target of us, is the target of the practicing devotees. So, and you're very honest, and you know me, I'm also very honest. So, honestly speaking, this is our only hope. When we hear from the mouth, from the lotus mouth, like Raghunath Goswami, otherwise, how? And from Gurudev, and from Baba, and from the Mahajans, otherwise, how can we ever progress? Because we are in the process and you, like you said, Suniti, it is sobering, it is humbling. And I know last year I had similar experiences. So this is very good. It's not depressing. It is very good to see where we are and what we have to do and that there is always hope. There is never a time when we can sit down and say, okay, I give up, that's it. I'm done. <laughs> Therefore, we have this Sadhu Sangha. Therefore, we have the words of the Mahachans. And this was actually Raghunathas Goswami is giving a nutshell of Raghunu, Raghunuga Bhakti. Even if we were feeling down, even if uh, we are feeling lonely and depressed and, and not full of strength, we still have the opportunity to have association, like Gora, Goranga Sundara last time said, um, Baba, they all live in their books. Prabhupada is living in their books and Narayan Maharaj is living in their, his books and Baba is living in the books. They are always there with us. So is Raghunatha Goswami. So is Rupa Goswami. So are they all. We are eating their prasadam. We are eating their glorious words. And this is our only hope. There is no other hope. I was just reading in the Bhagavatam this morning that actually hearing about Krishna and Radha is the only medicine and speaking about them is the only medicine in the Kali Yuga 
which is giving any result. And now I can see my mind, where my mind is going. He has a lot of things in this world still finding interesting. But honestly, Bhagavatam is the, is the Alpha and the Omega. And Bhagavatam says, we should try to focus on hearing about Radha and Krishna. And we are so lucky that we are not only hearing about Radha and Krishna, but we are hearing about their most intimate pastimes. And this is cleaning our hearts so much. So that's what I feel when I sit here with you and when we are talk and share and we listen to Gurudev and Baba. This is actually the only thing we can do next to our daily exercises. And then it is like what is natural for the perfected devotee. That should be our target. Rupa Goswami is saying in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, we should try to focus on the bath we prefer, and for us, this is Manjari Bhav, and we follow Rupa Manjari and our Guru Manjari. And even if we are still so, so, so far away, we should always know they love us. Like I said yesterday, last time, <laughs> yesterday, last week, we have so many Acharyas standing behind us that we never should feel this, we give up now. We are always, always have this great, great hope which is the words and the example of the Mahachans. And therefore, I'm thankful to you, Suniti, to be so honest and to Chakshu who chose that verse, because this is the only medicine. Hearing about Radha and Krishna in their intimate pastimes in Manjari Bhav, in Sachati Snikta Sangha, this is the only way to go out of this uh, loophole of, you know, misery and, and pain. Thank you. Radhe, Radhe. Um, I was just remembering something which is very normal here in this material world if you are into some kind of business because then you learn there is a mind behavior gap. What does that mean? The mind is learning something. Theoretically, somebody wants to give you some input. You want to follow that input. So the mind first accepts that input. But now it has to go the way to the heart, the exception of the heart. And then furthermore, you have to practice it. So this is meant by mind, behavior, Gap. The gap is the way in between. So what we hear is, first of all, how the great souls, what they are doing. So what is their praxis, practice is our goal. So now the gap is there. We are living in the gap. So what? It's the way. This is the challenge. So we don't have to be sad that we are in this gap because this is just the normal way. First you learn theory, then you practice it, and then by practicing you will get to the point. What it means, you need to be patient in this gap. You need to accept all help which is given by you in this gap. and. You need to be determined. So if you do like that, then people, even in this material world, tell you, you will be successful after some time. So here it's the same. So it's nothing to really be uh, uh, depressed or something like this or negative. No, it's just the normal way. And yesterday we heard also from Gauranga Sundara that sometimes when we were hurt emotionally, we may think or we may act like this, I cannot trust any person anymore because I was hurt. Yes, but now I want to trust again. This is the goal. And I have to go further on this line and then all ways to come over that emotional cuts 
all this hindrance will be taken away by some persons who will automatically come in your life and tell you or give you some book or some information. This is just the way it goes naturally. And we know already, and this is the good thing, that all the books, all the persons who can help us, they are there. We know already. Others, they have to depend on that. We have it for sure. So that means we will be successful if we stick to this process. And what impresses me very much is the description. I am your maidservant and my wine-like body burns in the forest fire of separation from you. It's such a wonderful emotional description. It's not just a description like Gyan. It is a wonderful emotional description. I am burning. We all know what is a plant which is going around a tree up and it has some flowers, a wine-like creeper. And this wine-like creeper, what chance it has when the whole forest is burning? A tree maybe has a chance, but such a wine-like flower has a chance to survive in such a forest fire? No. Without being with you, Swamini, I have no, no chance to survive. So this is actually trying to give us a feeling. It's not just an information, not just theory. It is a feeling transported by the mercy of Srila Raghunathas Goswami. And we should try, 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 if we like to be to a follower of him, then we should try to really get this feeling, not only the knowledge, because it's the way of feeling it's the way of bhava sorry i was talking no 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 very good i agree i very much agree and what i what came to my mind also was re returning now back to the words of bhava and to the text it was that um you know when when when, when i hear about separation from swamini i need to be honest i don't feel any separation from swamini because I'm not on the platform that I can feel separation from Swamini because I'm not, I'm not 100% attached to my Swarup. So Baba is saying you can only feel separation to Swamini if you are in Swarupa Avesha. So this gives us great hope that we know that I have a Swarupa and the more I think about myself in this Swarupa, so I'm preaching to my useless mind, the more I think about my Swarupa, the more some time I will feel separation from Swamini. And the more we hear from someone who does, like Raghunadaska Swami, the more these samskaras will enter into our hearts that we, oh, we hear about that. And then we think it should be really nice to feel the same way. So, so, so we should also try to, to think of ourselves as manjaris and start there. Swarupa Avesha. Avesha means to be aware of. It means not to have realized already. Then you don't have to be Avesha <laughs> and you don't have to be aware. So if you are, if you realize your Swarupa, then, then you are your Swarupa. So Avesha means we have to be aware that my Tarun big German body is not the only personality that is for me. So we all have a separate personality. In the spiritual realm, in the in the in the spiritual play, and this is what gives us great hope. And this is to be aware of Swarupa Avesha. We can only read this. Baba is saying, and oftentimes they say, uh, Baba is saying in the in one purport in Vilapakusamanjali, you can only read and meditate on the purports and Vilapakusamanjali if you are aware of your Swarupa, if you have Swarupa Avesh. So many times they say. You cannot read Vilapakusa Manjali until you realize your Swarupa. So this is actually not true. You have to be aware of your Swarupa. So Gurudev is giving us the information of who we are. And the more we meditate 
on that Swarupa, the more we become aware, we become aware up to that point where I actually can feel separation from Swami. I'm, 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 I'm just, if I would say, no, oh my God, I feel so much separation, I would be a liar. So I, I aspire for that, that these feelings will one day appear in my heart. And it can, I know they can only appear in my heart if I become more concentrated on my Swarupa wish. And this is the daily business of our mind. Every morning, every day, through hard and heavy and sweet and nice times, this is our job to always say to ourselves, at least I say to me, stop worrying about this mental bodily consciousness and always think this is my Swarup. It's sometimes easy and sometimes not, but never we give up. Never. We never give up thinking that we have a home, we have another personality, and when this game here is over, we should be greedy to, to have maybe entrance into Nikunja Lila by the Kripa of Gurudev. So this gives great, great hope. Otherwise, we can talk about separation from Swamini the whole day if we are not following the Mahachanas. What is the use? Thank you. Pardon, maybe you can uh, tell us your idea why it's written here vine-like body. Because a vine is very, very delicate, Gurudev could say, but I think his voice, Gurudev should, should tell us the vine, why it's always written like a vine, because a vine is very, very delicate and it's very, very beautiful and very soft. And uh, I'm I'm living into I'm living in the vineyards here in in our con in our area a lot of vineyards and you can see these vines they are so beautiful and soft so vine like body means very delicate you can only enter into Swarupa Avesh if you're not like me if you're not so gross you should be more delicate and soft soft hearted so this mind like every word of the Mahachans, like Raghunath Das is using, is saying to us, become soft. Gurudev is always saying to us, become soft-hearted. So a mind like body is a very, very soft body. And that should be our aspiration to give up this stubbornness and harshness and become more and more soft-hearted. That is what how I understand, because every word is a teaching. So mind like for me means I should not meditate on gross bodily identifications, but on my sweet manjari nature. And sometimes, like I said, this is easy and sometimes not. But when we hear these words, vine-like, a vine is very, very delicate. And, and also a vine has the possibility to grow into something very, very beautiful. And, and, and Raghunath Das Goswami is giving us hope that we can grow one day into our Beautiful Manjari Swarup. And Radha Radha, the wine also needs hold. Support. It's, it's support. It's growing around another creeper like a tree. And only in Radha Rani's case, the wine gives hold to the tree named Krishna. But usually, it needs hold and the wine like body of us needs the hold of course it needs support it needs hold otherwise it cannot grow thank you maybe we can read on or if this desire for the distinction does not allow the natural love for the lotus feet of the beloved deity to come in the heart. The root cause of this pollution is identification with the material body. In his Swarupa Vesh, the practicing devotee must certainly experience that. 
I don't have anyone else but you in this world. Unless one thinks like that, one cannot proceed towards the lotus feet of the beloved deity. Out of eagerness for his beloved deity, the practicing devotee cannot sit quietly. He feels like a deer pierced by an arrow. So he eagerly comes to Vrindavan, hoping to catch a glimpse of his beloved. Sila Naradam Das Tako has sung. When will I see blissful Vrindavan and smear its dust on my body? When can I lovingly roll around there, chanting the names of Radha and Krishna? and weeping profusely. I will go to the solitary arbors and fall flat on the ground, crying out, O Lord of Radha, when will I go to the bank of the Jamuna, touch her waters, and drink it with the cups of my hand palms. Oh, when can I go to the circle of the Rasa dance and roll around there? When will I become most happy by getting shaded by the Vamsivat tree and when can I stay in that shade? When can I fill my eyes with the view of Govardhan Hill? And when can I live at Radhakund? The lowly Naratam Das sings, When body fall while I wander around there? Rade, Rade. I was just hanging on this uh, pierced like a deer, a deer pierced by an arrow. Actually, usually in this world, I can see that most of the people, and when I say people, I usually mean people around me, like usually devotees, they want to have still some situation where everything is nicely, everything is peaceful, everything is just perfect. But this will never happen. This is actually the point made here. We should be like a deer pierced by an arrow. You cannot stay still, you will just die. Useless. You have to do something. Now the arrow is in your flesh. Now you should do something. Look where the mercy is. Where can I get the mercy? When can I? When can I? When can I? All these words we hear again and again from Srila Raghunadas Goswami. When can I serve you, my Radharani? When will I be with you and serve you in that way or in that way? Always we hear this. Srila Raghunadas Goswami has no peace. 
he's not just sitting there at Radakund and thinking everything is fine. No. He's always searching for the mercy and more mercy and especially for the Seva in his Rupa Vish. So we have to move on to our Swarup. Move in. More into feelings. And whatever is in the way, we need to search for help. Usually, first address Guru. In some cases, bodily not available anymore, but then still there's some other connection always. So, but we have to search for help actually. This is the point. And not just wait till the time is perfect. So, I think for, for me it was hard to understand that, that there will be never ever a situation in this world when everything is like we want it to be. Because if it would be so, we would just be in big trouble. We are pierced by the arrow of Brema. Now look for more Brema. I was just thinking about this, sorry. Jai <laughs> Shida. So Gorabaniji is okay. So very beautiful you explained and other Vaishnava also very beautifully explained in this bus. So especially this kada when it's very interesting. Narottama Das Takuru, Das Goswami, other Acharya, they are like Siddha. But they always say when. This representative, I feel this is uh, represent, show us so much greed and uh, so much humbleness. Even though they are perfected soul, they are Nitya Siddha, especially Raghunath Das Goswami. And, uh, but uh, acting just like ordinary condition soul and show us how much greed he has, they have. And this greed represents one pointness. I want only this one. I don't want anything else. So what is this one? This one is service for my Swamini. I need Babo Urasarasa, nothing else. Today, Gurudev was questioning to one devotee. What do you think? What is goal of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? What is, what is teaching of Mahaprabhu? What is goal of Mahaprabhu? Something like this question. And then that devotee describes, yes, Mahaprabhu's main essence of teaching is is Krishna Prema and distribute Krishna Prema. But Gurudev did not say at that time nothing. But I feel real teaching, real essence of Mahaprabhu teaching is show us Babo Urasarasa. Mahaprabhu show us the glory of made servant of Srimati Radharani, our Swamini and show us how to attain this goal through his dear most devotees, like Rupa Raghunath, especially Raghunath Das Goswami. So Gorabani said this kada, kada is very important thing because I feel show us one pointness, one point Stai Baba. I want this Baba Urasarasa. 
I want the service of Shri Mati Radharani. Nothing else. So, I wish to be like this. I wish to learn from this Raghunath Das Goswami and all other devotees. And today also Gurudev is saying, I want to share. Our problem is ego. And to remove ego, how to remove, then question, so we have ego, and then next question is how to remove the ego. Then Guru Dev is saying, only mercy of Guru, or say, as a Vaishnava, could remove this ego. And someone who have no ego, means he or she getting mercy from Gurudev. So this kada means always begging the mercy of our Ishtadeva or other, other Vaishnava, especially Rashka Vaishnava, like Guru Manjari, our, our eh, uh, apne apne, Gurudev, Swami. Rade, rade. Thank you so much, Jayananda Maharaj. And one thing is very important, I feel that we all came from similar backgrounds and always the question was how to get rid of the ego. <laughs> and always the answer was through rules and regulations, tapasya, renunciation, and be straight with yourself and fast and, and do all this tapasya and all these things and, you know, feel like a worm in the stool and all this, you know, this is a not, and uh, my humble opinion and what I experienced when I met my Gurudev, he never told me anything about that, uh, that this is not this is actually not the way and it didn't work. Every one of us sitting here, we know it didn't work. This is not the way how we get rid of the ego. So so then the ego gets lost the more we become aware of our Swarup. And this is much more important than, than all this tapasya and all this, you know, what we heard about, all this renunciation and all be, be severe to yourself and be heavy to yourself and of course, we have to be aware that our ego is the main problem. But what we realized in now 30 years and more, that the only way that we become uh, lost of, become rid of the ego is that we transfer the ego. We have, we have to transfer our identification from the body and, and to, the, to our Swarupa. And therefore, this Sita Pranali process coming through us, through Guru Parampara, it's utterly important that we have this, this, you know, this treasure in our heart that we know this is my soul. This is the form of my soul. This is my name. This is my seva. So only this can cure us of the ego. And in this consciousness, we listen to Harikatha about Radha and Krishna and Vrindavan. This is what Bhagavatam is saying in the 10th candle of Rikriditam. We should listen to to uh, the, the, the pastimes of Radha and Krishna in Vrindavan in the mood of a manjari, and then Brahma will appear in our hearts, not by, not by other uh, 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 strong renunciations and following the rules and rep regulations without. Uh, as I'm not saying don't follow <laughs> rules and regulations. I'm saying we should be aware of our Swarupa. And with this, Vishwana Chakravati Thakur is outlining us which rules and which Raganuka uh, 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 items should be followed. But more important is that we are aware that who we really are in the divine play, when we hear the divine play. This is much more important and it cures more the ego than, than everything else. This is just how I feel after so many years of, of punishing myself and, and be heavy to myself. Better to focus on the other identification of our Swarupa. Rade, rade. Thank you, Tarun Baba, to be so honest. I think we were in a religious process, although it wasn't a religious process. It was practiced religiously. Because actually, if you are doing performing Vairakya, 
to gain something, then this means it's the other side of the coin, right? There's the coin, this is the other side of the coin, Vairagya, or I want something. So I perform Vairagya that later on I can have more. <laughs> this is the subtle wish behind. So it is never ever the process to actually get rid of something. This is just when you want to cheat yourself. It is always the process of what do I really want? You cannot gain something if you are not thinking or meditating on what you want, but what you don't want. It doesn't work. You have to meditate on what you want. So, like you said, Tarun Baba, it's so perfectly this process. We are actually focusing on our real ego. What we are really. What I am. And we have this wonderful verse Gurudev mentioned so often. Nitya Sita Krishna Prema Satya Kabunoi. Shravanadi Sudha Chitta Kuroji Udoi. So actually everything is there. We just have to find our real ego in that sentence. So who we are, which kind of servants we are of Brahma. We know, I think we know, every one of us know what we want to gain. So meditate on that, work on that. And why we should think about to get rid of the false ego. In this moment, we concentrate on the false ego. We should focus completely on our real goal. That's it. The rest will come. I gave up trucks, alcohol, all the things by taking Prasad. This is my new truck. At that time was my new truck. And I could give up everything else. I wanted to get rid of something. I was looking for something real in this consciousness, in this Brahma consciousness, or at that time, Krishna consciousness. So it always worked out when I was focusing on the positive thing, like Gurudev always say, focusing on the positive thing. So actually in this way we get rid. So Tarun Baba, you explained already, but I wanted to underline it in other words again, because we all speak so many different words. Sometimes it's helpful when we hear it from different mouth to get a whole picture. Please forgive me. Maybe it was just the ego. <laughs> yeah, very nice. Thank you so much. Because bhakti is, as far as I understand, a process of replacement. We don't give up anything. We just replace whatever we don't want with the pure aspect of it. And it starts, as you already said, with prashat, and it ends with svarupavesh. And um, I want to give this wonderful example of Srila Prabhupada which is so simple to explain to everybody who doesn't understand the principle. He asked, if you have a glass of ink, ink, zu um, deutsch tinte, how to get, do you get rid of the ink? And the solution is just pour water pour water, pour water, until the ink is gone. And this, with this very, very simple example, he showed how the whole process works. So, uh, <clears throat> any comment? Otherwise, I will repeat, uh, continue. Sri Prabhupada Nanda Saraswati has said, Arade, when can I live in Vrindavan in great astonishment? Remembering the wave of your nectarian pastimes. When will I look around for you, thinking, now you have come, I understand, I'm getting it.
this eagerness for experience will swiftly bring the leelas before the eyes. Although I am living in Vrindavan, I don't experience anything. I have so many things to say about it, but actually my heart is empty. I want to get some result from my life of devotional practice. Even if I can just spend my time with the hope that you are my mistress, then I will attain you. Sri Raguna Das says, O oh Goddess, Sri Rade, I am a maidservant of your lotus feet. The vine-like body of this fallen, ma fallen maidservant is totally burning in the forest fire of separation from you. My mind is surrendered to you. Then it is as if Swamini asks him, Oh, isn't your heart eager for me? Then how can you attain me? She is the limitless ocean of compassion and she knows very well how to take her maidservants to her lotus feet by making them eager for her. How much she relishes the eager lamentations of her loving devotees. The maidservant is very eager and Swamini takes Shyamasunda along to listen to her lamentations. The Lord enjoys the flavors of devotion. Sri Krishna told Bilva Mangala Thakur, I am with you, and I am very happy to hear your lamentations of separation from me. Since your words delight my ears so much, I will call your book Krishna Karnamrita, Nectar for Krishna's Ears. Sri Raghunath's anxiety is heart-rending. His vine-like body burns in a great forest fire of love and separation. <clears throat> and he cannot survive anymore without submitting this. I am a maidservant of your lotus feet. That soothes even Shyamasunda's afflicted heart when he takes them to his chest. The vine like body of this fallen, fallen maidservant is burning in the forest fire of separation from you. Please, once revive me with your nectarian glance.
Srila Raghunath Das Goswami is a Nitya Siddha, a eternally perfect devotee. But the eagerness of the Sadhana Siddhas, the devotees who have attained the perfection of Prema in this lifetime, is also wonderful. Srila Siddha Krishna Das Babaji, who lived in Govardhan, prayed as follows. O oh, Queen of my life, my heart is constantly burning in the fire of separation from you. Please save me from this ocean of sorrow by keeping me at your lotus feet and making me your maidservant. When Will I hear the delectable words from your beautiful mouth and the jingling of your ankle bells? When will I drink the nectar of your indescribable beauty through the cups of my eyes in topmost ecstasy? And when? Will I smell your bodily fragrance, making all the hairs of my body stand on end? Please bless this new maidservant by giving her the nectarian food remnants that emanate from your lotus mouth. You are my japa, you are my penance, and you are my meditation. And since I was born, I haven't known anyone but you. Wherever you sport with your lover and your girlfriends, please take me there also as your maidservant. Thus, the foreign Krishna thus weeps, holding a straw between his teeth and praying, O oh, golden beauty, please fulfill my desires. Radhe, Radhe. I think these are such wonderful examples. First, it is said that Radharani loves to hear the lamentation of her devotees. She loves to hear. It is not that she don't want to hear. Sometimes we think, but we cannot lamentate. Yes, not material. <laughs> you should not lament on material things. That's the point. But it doesn't mean that you shouldn't lament on spiritual wishes. Actually, this is what we should do. We should lament, lament all the time. Please, please, Swamini, help me to come in my Swarup. Please, please give me some hope. Let me survive. Let me go on. Whatever is on the way of spiritual enlightenment. Of course we can. And later on, maybe these prayers will change into when can I serve you in this and that way. But first of all, we have to begin in some way, but on a spiritual platform. And then develop. Because she likes to hear that. She loves to hear that. Doesn't a mother love to hear the crying of the baby? So, actually, this gives so much hope. And even Srila Ananda Das Babaji, which is 
from my understanding on a completely another level than I can imagine. But he's also given an example, although I am living in Vrindavan, he's saying, I don't experience anything. I have so many things to say about it. But actually, my heart is empty. He wants to give us some example how to feel. Not just because I heard something, it is with me. It's the beginning. I heard it and I heard it many hundred times, maybe thousand times. But maybe after 108,000 times, it will make click. And then it's in the heart and it should be in the heart. So Srila Das Babaji is telling us, if it's not in the heart, it will not be so helpful. Because if it's not a feeling, it's not connected with yourself. Your real self has to feel it. Who wants to serve Radha? My ego? Outside? Material? No. My real one. I am the servant of Radha. I want to serve her, this ego. So, like Tarun Baba always say, fake it until you make it. Yes, we should try to, on this level, maybe first fake these prayers, but then feel it more and more, that actually it's connected with us. These prayers are actually eternally, and we are connected to them. Our Swarup is connected. So this is giving for me a lot of hope that such great souls are actually going down to give us some example how we should act. And here we have this, of course, ever-shining example of Srila Raghunathas Goswami also. So wonderful. So thank you for your association and for inspiring Jai Shri Ravi. So I continue the purport. How am I spending the day having such great teachers? Some of this eagerness and enthusiasm will appear in the lives of those who naturally perform the bhajan. How much Sri Raghunath Das is lamenting? It is as if his heart is breaking. Suddenly, like a lightning strike, a new spiritual vision comes to him. He sees that Sham is decorating Swamini while Sri Rupa Manjari holds the dressing paraphernalia in her hand. Shyam paints pictures of Makari fishes on Radhika's cheeks. But it doesn't work so well because his hands are shivering of loving ecstasy. Seeing how Shyam is absorbed in decorating her, Swamili softly smiles. That smile is like nectar. What if it will fall off? Krishna won't allow it to fall, 
So he catches it with the cups of his lips by kissing her. Swamini casts a restless glance on Shyam's face and enchants him completely with this. Sri Raghuna Das is absorbed in relishing this nectarian pastime in his Siddha Swarup. Seeing Shyam's incompetence, Swamini looks towards Tulasi, hinting at her that she should take Shyam's job over. Tulasi's heart is filled with bliss when she gets this order. But when she gets up, the vision disappears and Sri Raguna Das, returning to his external absorption, falls on the bank of Radhakund, crying and lamenting. Burning with endless feelings of separation, he considers Radhakund to be just like a gapping mouth of a tiger. Out of separation from my heart's beloved, it seems to me that the great fields of Raj are completely empty. Govardhan Hill has become like a python, and Radhakund has become like the gapping mouth of a tiger. Rardhanashraya Chaturdasakam 11 These divine playgrounds are so much reminding a loving devotee of his beloved deities while he is deprived of their personal service and association that the mere sight of them gives him great pain of separation. Sri Raghunath weeps and prays. Remembering the ever so sweet merciful glances that Swamini casts on her him when she orders her him to perform such sweet services. These glances are Amrita, A like not, and Mrita like death. And they are the only medicine that can revive him. So he anxiously prays, Please, cast just one merciful glance on this fallen maidservant. I, I want... No, sorry. <laughs> read, read, read. Read. No, continue. We are happy to hear you. I want, to, I want to add something to Gauravani's uh, explanation, which is perfectly fine, but I might not 100% agree with Baba coming down to our level, but I understand what you mean, Gauravani. But honestly speaking, when Baba is saying, my heart is empty and I, I am living in Vrindavan, when he is saying these words, he is not... I understand our perspective. It, it looks like he's giving an example, but honestly speaking, it's not, he's not given an example. It's like he feels that is the symptom of the Uttama Adhikaris who always think 
that the others are more advanced than mine. So that is actually how Baba perfectly feels. Of course, we can see it as an example and use it in our service. But I might not 100% agree that he is coming down on our, he's showing us in one way. But this is really how he feels. If he says, if he writes like that, I'm 100% sure that that is how he feels. That is the Uttama Dikari. He says, I, I live here. That is humility in perfection. And these, these great souls, they feel like that and they speak like that. And we, I agree with that. We can use that as an example, but that is how, how he, how he feels. That is my, my understanding. I was um, very interested in this explanation of uh, Shilananda Das Babaji. He's writing A, ah, not, and Mrita, that. So this is the medicine, the elixir, which is actually revive him. I find this so sweet, explained. Because this is actually the way it is. We, we get our lives. We, we don't have to die. When we get Amrit, we don't have to die anymore. We will be not in the bodily consciousness anymore. So that means we don't have to die. If we get Amrit, we will be in the right consciousness, identify with our Swarup, and then we don't have to die. We will go on making seva all the time. So it's a wonderful explanation. Not Mrita, not that. By getting this cleanse of Swamini, <laughs> we will get our life. <laughs> Sri Rasika Chandra Das sings, Listen, O oh Goddess, to my request. I'm your maidservant, dedicated to your lotus feet for longer, for long. My body burns in the fire of separation from you like a vine in a forest fire. And the commentary ends here, your momentary glance is like a stream of nectar and I only want one drop of that. Please, give it to me. And thus, save your Dasi's life. I have no other shelter but you. So I'm going to read the verse 10, the translation again. Oh Goddess, I'm a maidservant of your lotus-like feet, whose vine-like body burns in the forest fire of separation from you. Please revive me at once with your nectarian glances.
This is very interesting. Please revive me at once with your nectarian glances. I am suffering in this material world in bodily consciousness. And uh, I forgetting Swarupa Besh. If you kindly give me sidelong glance to me, then I can revive my Swarupa Besh, Swarupa consciousness. I, I, I can remember your relationship with your maid servant. And uh, we are now chanting uh, every uh, evening, like Radha Kripa uh, Kataksha. And uh, this praying, he, Ragnar Das was showing us that dividing a Swarupa Besh by, by desiring Radhika's nectarian glances. All we need to revive our Swarupa Besh, Swarupa consciousness. Radhika. Seva dia brana rako. Gurudev, I didn't see you so long time, didn't hear you. Please, please, please give me some drops of nectar. Only I will say, drinking from the airs has to be loud. Very sweet voice is a mental. Uh, Calculation will be going on. If you have to be loud, then we can drink from the air to the heart, and then we will melt. And when we will slowly talking, then it will stay up to mind only. Sorry, this is my request to everyone. Shout loud <laughs> that we go inside my heart and we melt and cry for that. Please, this is only my wish. It has to go in my heart. It is different layer from the mind to heart. We have to drink it. We have to chant to listen to drinking. You talk, but very slow. It is only staying in the mind. <laughs> Sorry. This is my request to you. Thank you. Very that is very... Material, material blockage. He stopped there. Mm. It should so loud that it can open to drink my heart can melt. Please, this is only by the way. Go on with this mode. So everyone my request is reader sharing. Everyone has to do that. Slow, steady, and loud. Chakshu, um, maybe you want to read the verse again very loud.
<laughs> oh goddess I'm a maidservant of your lotus like feet who's I'm wine your like maidservant I'm your maidservant of your lotus feet why I will deviate from my maidservant too I'm your maidservant I have to say loudly this. I am your master. Yeah. I am. I am your master. Leave the Baha Mantra chanting. Say that I am your master. Chant this mantra. I am only your master. This is Baha. Wow. I don't want to know other than this. When I will be your maidservant, the time will change, everything will change in my life. Problem is this, I know except loudly inside me that I am your maidservant. I want to be maidservant of Maya. Sometimes this, sometimes that, sometimes that. But what is going to help me? I am your master. Yeah. That is wrong. Oh, Goddess. I am a maidservant of your lotus-like feet, whose vine-like body burns in the forest fire of separation from you. Wow. Then burn me. If I am not maidservant, why I will burn from you? I no bother anything. I am your maidservant and so many other desires, this is my burning. Other thinking is burning. I burn. Because it disturbs my country. <laughs> your mercy that uh, I cannot accept this, your better me. This, this, I burn out. Why I deviate from this point? This is my false ego catching. That burns. And the wine-like body is so sensitive. This is the burning because wine-like is very fine, thin, sensitive. And if there is no possibility to my seva, then I'm burning inside. I cannot accept this, this situation. I become burning my whole body. What is meaning a wine in the in the tree that is a, uh, the creeper. A creeper. Creeper. And this is the what is the use of this creeper who has no relation with the tree? No. What is the use of this creeper? Creeper is burning without no relation with the tree. I have no relation with you. So what do I am clipper for? For what clipper is this? No feeling. No connection. No, no connection. Right? This is my body. Thank you.
That's good. If by hook or by crook, we have to uh, evoke feelings, and feelings come by speaking or by singing uh, our feelings and go deeper into that, uh, you know, the feelings than the analyzing. Because this analyzing, it is something we have already so many lifetimes analyzing the shastras analyzing uh the mind the intelligence but the feelings is something that only catches the you know can catch the the other senses that we can come to the higher senses and that's why we need you Guru. we need to listen to you sometimes <laughs> now the milk is coming it's very important Yes, Gurudev, we need some milk from you. Drink. Give us your breast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, this is the multi male consciousness, there is no breast. The female has a breast. They have a feeling. They have a love. They can they can breastfeed to us. My Radhika has the best feeding. Mother can give uh, breastfeed to us. Mera has no breast. They have no feeling. <laughs> they can be Amazon, but they have no feeling like my son. <laughs> She is expanded. Ananga Manjari, Radha Shakti, all this expansion of Radhika. Ananga Manjari, also Radhika. Radhika is also Radha Shakti. Advaita Achar is Mahavishnu. Okay. Good. Got this. But without this Radha Shakti, what is the reason of Machaitanya to happen? Audhariya, Marcia of Mahapru is only Radha Sakti. Like we Jagai Madhai, without killing my false ego, how can Tanya change our life? So, Gurudev, who is Srivas in that connection? Srivas is a Narada who always worships Narayan. Only Krishna, up to Krishna, this Narayan Bhakta today has become Radha Bhakta. 
और धारी आदि कृष्णा दिस नारायण वक्ता विज्ञान प्राथ वक्ता द्वैताचार्य शिवा एंड विष्णु महाविष्णु देवी का राधा वक्त रियलाइज नाउ वेन सी द लव ऑफ चैतन्य is a hidden but very deep mercy of radha krishna to that what we are doing we are making our ear bad that we don't want to listen out of this and this is the mercy of mahajans that so much my ear become bad that i don't like to listen out of this subject <laughs> if this is my subject somebody share i will run to listen if there is any my friend sharing out of this subject i will run away from this that this madness is a, is a, is a, is a ear becomes so bad that i cannot go in all details in formation before was in formation gathering i forget to information gather only i want to be one bhav a sai bhav we don't want to deviate from that rule then bhav das rati comes without a sai there is no bhav das rati sanchari cannot get bhav das are a walking person how they will be a sai and when there is no sai bhav das rati is a rasa a sai rasa other rasa cannot eat at there like chaitanya mahaprabhu he he was giving only one bath to everyone although he know that they were in different baths because he come for that he come to relish himself bhav lasu so he took the mood of radhika and take the color of radhika means he become radha dasi krishna become radha dasi krishna teaching how to get the bhav lasu this is the head teacher हमको अलग आउट के चाहिए उर्दू फिर जाके कहना हो बोल दिया हमें हाँ तो हमको चाहिए हम यू गॉट मोर मिल्क नाउ यू कैन फीड अस मोर मिल्क I want to buy one cow that everyone drink. Wow! Come, we have to come, Gora Sundar. I'm much suffering without you. I'm Bring coming, Gora. Yeah, I'm missing you. 
this um, all is that. <laughs> No voice. I went. I took the job of cow milk. Yes, Seva. I want to treat this milk. Everyone has to drink milk. I'm going to organize this Seva. Wow. Very nice. And I. Hmm? What good eh? I will serve from my room. <laughs> wow, this is like a the milk station, the nectar. Yes. The Amrita. I'm still in that <clears throat> meditation. We read some days ago the bathing ceremony of Sri Radha and there was, we read about that we use milk, yogurt and ghee for her bathing and this picture is so intense because this milk is the love we bathing her in and so she is so merciful that she is because even if she is the most shy person in the universe she is showing to the to the public her body in the bathing ceremony. So she has so much compassion to us that she is delivering love to us. We can see her and her love is overflowing the whole universe. This is the, the milk most of, huh? milk of my family. Yeah. As a baby, when we suck from the nipple of family, the milk, then my spiritual life realization comes. Yeah. Without sucking the milk of family, the love of family, nobody can be out of religious practice and he will never understand his spiritual meaning of life. Oh. And then he will not understand what is the dasi of Radhika, what is the med servant of Radhika. Because he not drink the milk. <laughs> so we are not loyal. We not receive the mercy for, of love. We not understand that. The day we will take the milk from her nipple, a breast, and play with the breast of her, then we will realize where to go out from her. Who is the place that I can get this mercy? Without no qualification, all the bad habits are there, but of drinking milk and cleaning myself. Wow. No need to effort for anything. I ask the Kikrupa, how I can live when I got everything from you to you? Living is a man most burning place I am searching for myself. No other place. Than your lotus feet on my life. Oh.
Oh, good. There is no more to add, Gurudev, to that. Mm. We drink the milk from Radhika. Yeah. There is nothing in between. She is opening everything to us. She is no shy to her maidservant. That's the our connection with her is never to never. Mm. I know cut never from you. You cut never, but I will not leave it. The doctor cut in between never of the mama and baby. But the real baby is connected with never to never with mama. Mm -hmm. This is relationship, Gurudev. This is. And mama, the baby play, she put the finger in the navel of mother and say, Mama, I. You forget, but I will never forget that our connection and your connection is from there. So she, she play with the fingers. They don't know, but this finger, they go bring that to play. All mama understand this. Mm. This is divine connection. 